Good morning. Morning. Our bellies are full of bacon sandwiches. Yum, 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 yum. And a cup of tea. Mm. And we're ready for off. Uh, it's Wednesday morning. We've been here since Monday. Yes. It was supposed to rain all day yesterday, so the plan was to stay a couple of days. But it was lovely. It was actually quite nice. It didn't rain at all yesterday until about five, six o'clock, and yeah. then it's just rained overnight, and it's cleared up this morning. Yeah. That's just perfect, isn't it? Perfect cruising That's weather. That's how you want it. Perfect boating. So we've moved the boat around to the services. Uh, we've just filled up with water, emptied the pot, got rid of the rubbish, and we're ready for off. Uh, but we just wanted to tell you a little bit about Chewit Field, because it is really nice. Chew it. As your mother used to say before you swallowed it. <laughs> Chew it! It is quite nice. Literally, a minute's walk behind the services, you've got a pub and a restaurant, and like a little holiday park with nice. chalets. It's really nice. Yeah. Then across the road, that they built the bridge over the M6 that blocks the canal. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> is like a farm shop and an arts and antiques center and like a petting farm. It's a really nice place. Yeah, lovely cafe, isn't it? And it would be lovely around here. The only problem is this. And you can't really get rid of that noise. Wherever you are on these moorings around here, you can probably hear it in the background to where we're talking. It's just across those trees there. Noisy. But apart from that, it's a nice place. And this is where it ends. This is the end of the southern part of the Lancaster Canal. 20 odd miles of lock free canal, one swing bridge, and that's it. It does carry on. The M6 is just on my right hand side, and there's a bridge, a road that carries it across the M6. And the canal is just on the other side of there. That's the northern reach of the Lancaster. Shall we go have a look? On the other side, there it starts again. But you can hear the noise in the background. That's the M6, which along with that road up there, just cuts straight through the middle of the canal. Can't really get Silver Fox through that, can we? To be honest, it wasn't really the M6's fault. The canal had really gone into disuse. The railways were taking over, they were taking water out of the canal, and they were actually starting to fill it in up towards Kendall. So it wasn't looking that good. And by the time the 1960s came around, Department of Transport wanted to build that. And it basically cut straight through the Lancaster at Chewett Field. Was that it though? No. It was only a couple of years later that the Lancaster Canal Trust was formed and they've been working for over 55 years to restore the Lancaster Canal north of Chewett Field. Nine miles of the 14 miles that's not used anymore still has water to it and the reservoir is still feeding the canal and they've been working hard for many years restoring the buildings, keeping the bridges and tunnels going and actually working to reopen parts of the canal. It's probably not going to happen in my lifetime but it'd be great, wouldn't it, to get that extra 14 miles from Chewett Field all the way into Kendall again. Mm -hmm. 
As lovely as this canal is, you know, it nearly didn't happen at all. Way, way back in the 1700s, James Brindley was asked to survey for it. Now he got his apprentice, Robert Whitworth, to do the work for him. And he came up with a route that came from Kendall down to Lancaster and Preston. And then his plan was to go through Leyland and join the Lancaster with the Leeds Liverpool Canal at Parbold. People didn't have the appetite for it for some reason. I mean, the snuff and tobacco curing industry were booming in Kendall. There was loads of traffic, but it never happened. Instead, they built the port at Glasson on the mouth of the Loon. It just made better sense at the time. But it wasn't over. And a few years later, John Rennie was approached and he was asked to survey for the Lancaster Canal. Now, he followed mostly the same route that Robert Whitworth had planned from Kendall down to Lancaster and into Preston, but his idea was to join onto the Ribble instead of going down to the Leeds Liverpool. And that got passed. It got the funding, and in 1792, they started building it. 1819, 200 years ago this year, it was completed. And then a few years later, 1826, they built the Glasson Arm to join the Lancaster with that new port down at Glasson. <laughs> It is a really nice spot. If you're mooring up down at Chewett Field at the end of the canal, you can walk the 14 miles up to Kendall. And it's a beautiful walk. Don't get me wrong, you've got the M6 like 20 meters to my left, and you're always hearing that. But you can still get the bird song, and on this right hand side, it is open countryside. You've got the water from the old disused locks, and it is a really nice walk. Albeit it would be better with a t-shirt and some sunshine today. What a difference a couple of days makes. Look at this. Sun's out. Sunsh the sun shines on the Lancaster Canal. There is proof. It's been a bit uh, blowy and chilly up there past the ice wall at Chewett Field on the northern reaches where Ooh. the wildlings live. The free folk. The free folk just outside Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> so we're heading south uh, back towards Lancaster and our next destination on the Lancaster Canal. Can you guess where we're going? Oh, I like to guess. Give them a clue. There's locks. There's locks. That kind of gives it away, doesn't it? <laughs> so we will see you down there next time. I hope you can join us. Till then, if you've liked this vlog, give it a like. Subscribe if you're not already and hit the bell for YouTube to let you know every time we release a brand new vlog. Yes. Hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. See you later, bye. Six times we've tried to record this bloody thing. I tell you, we've been here two days and we've not seen a soul at this point. As soon as you get a camera out, put it on a people. tripod, you get people sitting waiting. Oh, what are you filming for? You get CRT people coming. Oh, that's a nice bow, that's a nice paint job. And it's all very nice. We just want to get this bloody thing done. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot to do here. No, they're in. Yay. <laughs> Blank face. <laughs> Sean's huffy face. <laughs> you look like you look like one of them tortoises off uh, one foot in the grave. Put the goddamn camera away. <laughs> his apprentice. Now he got his apprentice, his pupil James Whitworth, to do the work for him. Robert Whitworth. Now he got his apprentice of the time, James Whitworth, to do the work. 
It's not James Whitworth, is it? Robert Whitworth. I will get this right. And James Brindley was approached. No, that's wrong. John Rennie was approached. Ah, me and bloody history. And James Brindley was then approached. No, it wasn't. Ah, it was John Rennie. Ah. If you've enjoyed the vlog, get the vlog. Vlog it. Vlog it. As of, oh, I am not good at this today. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna fart then. <laughs> Ah! Oh. <laughs> I'm sat next to you. <laughs> what? <laughs> you keep trumping. I've only done it twice. Please don't come over and talk to us. Right, start that again. Why? Well, I'll edit that bit out. Yay.